finished my first call, which was a wall hung that was uh, leaking in a heat exchanger. But I'm on my way now to a Wall McLean Ultra 3 that I was at uh, last week for a maintenance, a full cleaning. Uh, it was pretty bad, but the cover panel was cracked in two places, had two stripped out screws, so I'm replacing the cover panel and hopefully that goes well. I've done one before, it's pretty straightforward, it's just a lot has to be taken apart and put back together. Here is our unit, you can see big uh, circulators, Armstrong circulators with Radiant zones, 10 here, 4 there, and 12 more upstairs, I believe. But I'll start with the, taking the copper off and disconnecting the wiring. side and here is the unit so I have to take all the wiring out so that I could pull it off and uh, spook it here reconnect the inducer to the new one which is in the box here's our first crack and up there I don't know if you can see it is the second crack but this one was the bad one and see it, it's tapped with a different screw size right here and one of the screws that goes in from the other side into here is completely stripped out and irreparable so we'll get started it's, turn the gas off disconnect the gas and disconnect everything and with all our wiring disconnected and our gas is disconnected and off I will take all these off. I'll just go around the whole thing and then pull the cover off. Okay, now I can pull it off. No, I can't. I left a screw there. A bolt, a nut. Here's the refractory. This is that stripped out screw, so it's not holding this on tightly. And here's our heat exchanger, which was just cleaned. And that is the best it could get. A lot of these are bent, so I can't get the tool in there, but it is what it is. What was happening was when the inducer kicked on and the gas opened, it was actually blowing a sheet of fire down this way, rather than just around this, so sort of getting it taken apart. Got the two out, and I'll show you this one. It's the other side, and that's the hole. So, I don't know what the people who worked on it before did, but... So beat up. And the new one is right here, but gotta take off this nut and another one back there to pull the uh, inducer off. Here's our new one. And see the difference between the new and the old. 
all this crud on it from the heat exchanger, but it would be nice to know he has a new one in here. New gaskets, new refractory, new bolts, screws, uh, new sight glass, so it'll be nice. I got that little piece of insulation on there lined up. And then the glass. And then the copper piece. And I've got two hex head screws that I'll tighten slowly so I don't crack the glass. And that's on there for the mesh. This piece goes over and this gets lined up so that the flat side is where the igniter is and it has these bolts with these little locking flaps so you flip it up so it prevents it from unthreading. Okay, and those are bent up so they can't spin out at all and loosen. I've tightened it with this little nut driver extension. It's a uh, 930 seconds. Super tiny and kind of difficult to get in because it's a little bit thick. Now I'll get the inducer assembly on, which is just two screws and a gasket. Comes with two new locking nuts. I'll zoom in. These screws are very difficult and these bolts are very hard to get tightened. Nuts. Let's use my little nut box, it's the only thing that'll fit, because there is just no room there, especially this one, because it's in between a corner, two pieces of metal. I've got it on. Now I can put the gasket all around, and then put my igniters and everything back on once it's on there. Okay, it's on and in place. Got the igniter in with the gasket. And this is torque, uh, following a torque sequence to make sure that you don't cause any cracking and that it sits flush. But uh, now I can hook everything up and I'm gonna do a combustion analysis because now this has been changed, the uh, gap there, it may burn differently. And I'm here, might as well. Okay, and as you can see and hear, it's running and running very quietly. Uh, got the testo set up, and then we'll do our combustion reading right where that temperature sensor is. Got it hooked up, and I gotta let it run for a while because it is gonna burn off some stuff, like oils and things and material, but should be good to go. Here are our combustion results, and if you're curious, this is the reading from before the panel was changed. You can see our O2 and our CO2 are slightly different, and our carbon monoxide is much higher in the older one. So, it's burning safely at what the manufacturer recommends. And we are complete once I put this in. Personal carbon monoxide detector 
is going up to uh, 1,600 particles per million of carbon monoxide. And the uh, combustion analysis, I had to stop at 3,000 and get out of the room before I died. So, that was crazy. They just bought the house, so they're pretty upset. But it is what it is. Hopefully you enjoyed watching. Uh, if you did, like the video, uh, comment any advice or criticisms or feedback, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.